Okay. Okay, so uh, let, let me start by talking about uh, trying to combine our uh, coefficients result with the F rational uh, rings. And so let me talk for a moment about Brianson Skoda theorems with coefficients in F rational rings. Uh, so uh, Hunicke and I were interested in that, of course, uh, once we had the F rational result. And so we proved uh, the following theorem in a, a follow-up paper. Uh, it's a little technical, so, uh, or it has a lot of hypotheses. So let me write it out. Uh, so let's let R, M, uh, B, and excellent uh, F rational. If you don't know what excellent is, just think complete. Uh, local ring. Um, suppose we have J contained in I, a reduction. Uh, okay, let's let uh, L be the analytic spread of I. Let's assume that's strictly larger than H, which is the height of I. Okay, um, so assume the following properties. Let's see, R mod I is equidimensional. Uh, so that means R mod H minimal prime is this, the same dimension for all minimal primes. Um, so that I is uh, generically um, what is it Red, uh, of reduction number at most one. So that means at each minimal prime, the the I localized at P has reduction number at most one. And um, so there, there's three, that condition, that condition. And that R mod I unmixed uh, satisfies Sarah's depth condition. Uh, S sub L minus H plus one. So this is a condition that locally we have a certain uh, minimum depth. Then um, we proved I to the L bar is contained in uh, J times I unmixed. Okay, and I'm not going to try to do any proofs for this little bit, but that, that was what we got. So uh, I had a student, Aline, Hosri. Uh, and so we were able to uh, generalize this theorem. So uh, let me take the statement and paste it over here and make the appropriate uh, oops, the appropriate changes. Okay. So uh, so we were able to prove that you don't need excellent, you just need Cohen-Macaulay. So F rational rings are Cohen-Macaulay under mild conditions. Okay, so uh, you don't need to assume R mod I is equidimensional. You don't need to assume I is generically of reduced, uh, reduction number at most one, and you don't need to assume the depth condition. So you don't need to assume anything, but you can get a better result because then for all W greater than or equal to zero, um, 
you get that the usual uh, statement holds. So over here, we get to add a w plus one. And so uh, one thing for, for those of you who are, are young and starting out, this, was, this is a really good lesson to learn is you can read other people's papers and you can, you should give some real thought to what their uh, hypotheses are because there are definitely times when most of their hypotheses are not necessary, not most, some of, some of the hypotheses may not be necessary, okay? So again, I'm not gonna uh, talk about any proofs here, just, just wanted to point out that we, we can actually combine these. Um, so, I'm going to switch gears now a little bit, and I want to talk about what are called coefficient ideals. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good advice. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so let me talk now about what are called coefficient ideals. The terminology here perhaps isn't ideal. Uh, because we've been talking about Briant's and Skoda theorems with coefficients. Now I'm going to talk about coefficient ideals, and they're not the, quite the same thing. Um, so uh, let me point out, right, that our in our earlier results, we've always exploited the difference between the analytic spread and the height. So the difference, uh, we looked at L of I minus the height of I. And so the, the equation that I wrote at the end of lecture one and the start of lecture two, that, that really has the most power so far that we've seen when we when when there's a difference in these two things, and we we can use that. Um, so then, uh, but of course, right, that leads to the question: What can we say uh, when L of i is equal to the height of i? And these are usually called uh, equimultiple ideals. Um, and so the most uh, basic example here is uh, if we if I is contained in a local ring and the radical of I is M, then we have that the analytic spread of I, well, it's bounded below by the height, which is the dimension of the ring, and above by the dimension of the ring, which is the dimension of the ring. And so L of I is equal to the dimension of R is the height of I. Okay, so, so there's a situation where we might wanna be able to say more, but uh, we certainly can't exploit this difference, okay? And so I think that leads us to wanting to define this coefficient ideal. Uh, I've got properties, so I guess I meant to define the coefficient ideal. Uh, all right, so definition. Uh, let's let R be Noetherian. And J and I in R, any two ideals. Uh, let me give myself a little bit more room here. Uh, so let so notice J is not, I'm not assuming J is contained in I here. Uh, so 
the coefficient ideal of I relative to J is um, we're going to use this kind of uh, what's that a, a frac a um, a of i comma j um, it is the largest ideal say frac b such that um, i times frac b is equal to j times frac b. Okay, and if if we know we're talking about i and j, I'll drop the parentheses here. We can just call it a. Okay, so that is what the coefficient ideal is. So let me go through some of the properties, and these are all exercises. Um, so uh, so say R is Noetherian. Okay, and I, this is, I don't need to be local or characteristic P. And now let's assume for the moment, let's assume J is contained in I, in R, then, uh, actually, I think I'm gonna number these one. Um, this coefficient ideal is always well-defined. Um, and two, if A, so again, this is A, uh, if frac A, the coefficient ideal, contains a non-zero divisor, um, then the two ideals must be equal up to integral closure. Okay. Uh, and so J is a reduction of I, okay? And in this case, uh, then there exists N bigger than or equal to zero, such that a power of I is contained in the coefficient ideal. All right. And now let's assume we're in the local case. So if R M is local, um, let's assume J contained in I is a reduction. And let's set R equal to the reduction number of uh, J with respect, sorry, of I with respect to J. Um, then um, let me define a sequence of ideals. Let's set uh, A1 to be the colon ideal J colon I itself. Okay. Uh, and um, for larger values, let's set a n plus one to be the j times the previous one colon i. Okay, so this is a sequence of ideals. Um, so I guess let's call this three. Uh, we have that. I to the R is contained in the coefficient ideal. Uh, the coefficient ideal is contained in each of these uh, A sub Ns. They're all N, okay. And this is a uh, decreasing sequence. So A N plus one is contained in A N, all right. 
And the fourth thing, if, if I is M primary, then uh, the sequence stabilizes. So IE AN is A for all N large enough. Okay, so those are the basic properties here. Of and in your statement three, who is R in the exponent you have in I? Uh, who R, is this exponent R? Because R, I, I don't know. R is the reduction. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're, yeah. you're right. No problem. Uh, okay, so those those are the basic properties, as I and I've left those as exercises. Okay, so here is the theorem. My lights automatically go out if there's no motion. Uh, and I guess my arm moving isn't enough. All right, so uh, this here is a theorem. In the notes, it's 3.4. Again, this was um, proved by myself and Craig uh, in 2001. Uh, so it says the following. Uh, let Rm uh, be a regular local ring uh, containing a field. Um, with, uh, I guess, R mod M infinite. Um, so let uh, I be an M primary ideal and J contained in I a minimal reduction. Okay, um, then for all W, there's a little trick here. We're gonna start with minus one instead of zero. Uh, if we look at I to the D plus W integral closure, so that's the usual, remember D, D is the analytic spread here. Uh, in this case, this is contained in J to the W plus one. Well, so that would be the usual Briansen Skoda theorem, but where can we put the coefficients? We can put them in the coefficient ideal. I comma J. Okay. So um, as usual, the, um, the characteristic zero case follows by reduction to characteristic P. So we are gonna concentrate on the characteristic P case. And so one, uh, the, Really the biggest tool we want to use here is the following observation. Okay, so in, in a regular ring, if we take two ideals, say A and B contained in R, well, so we can, we can form A colon B and we can take the qth bracket power. And that's obviously related to a to the Q colon B to the Q. In a regular ring, they're equal. And again, that is really the flatness of Frobenius, okay? In general, if you take the left-hand side, so if you take the colon and you take the Qth bracket power, you're gonna land inside the A to the Q colon B to the Q b to the bracket q, but the right-hand side is usually much larger. I mean, that, that you know, there, there's just all kinds of things that, that should get in that colon that don't start there or don't come as q to the power, okay? But in a regular ring, uh, we, we get that those are the same. 
Okay. So, yep, I think the rest of my notes are just to do the proof. Okay. So, um, and then talk about a few other things. Uh, so I'm going to do, uh, so most of the work is the W equals minus one case. So which we will need. Okay, so we want to show, i.e., we want to show that i to the d minus one bar. Well, this will be j to the zero. <laughs> um, a i j. So, in other words. We just, we want the D minus first power to be in A. All right. Um, so, um, so what we show, so we will show that I to the D minus one bar is contained in A N. For all n, and then right for n sufficiently large, a n equals a. All right. Um, actually, so in fact, we'll show something slightly different. We'll show that. Um, I to the D minus one Q bar is contained in A N to the bracket Q for all N and for all, I guess for all Q. Okay. So, um, and of course notice that this Let's see, if we look at i to the d minus one bar to the bracket q, that's contained in there. Okay, so, um, so then i to the d minus one bar is contained in a n star, which is equal to a n because we're in a regular local room. So that's that's really our goal. And uh, one thing that this argument is gonna illustrate in, uh, in rings of characteristic P when you're using tight closure is that uh, you notice we've, we've already taken a Qth power here, but we are gonna prove this using tight closure, which means we're gonna take uh, what I'll call Q prime powers of the Qth powers and use tight closure, uh, kind of doubly then, I guess. All right, so let's see if we can go through that argument. Um, so let's, let's start a new page. All right. So, for n equals one, right, we want to show that um, i d minus one q, the integral closure of that um, is contained in j colon i, that's um, to the bracket q, right? This, that's a one. To the bracket Q. Okay. And as we said, that's so because this is a regular ring, that's J to the Q colon I to the Q. Okay. So in this case, let's let X 
bn i to the d minus one q bar. And I guess I'm gonna call it to follow the notes, uh, r b in i to the q. Okay. And we just need to multiply. Um, so, well, first we'll choose a C not equal to zero as in exercise two. And this is uh, for the ideal IDQ for that power of I. Okay. Um, so, then for all Q prime, so we'll introduce our new power of P. We are going to look at C R X to the Q prime. Okay, so uh, we're, we're trying to show that when we multiply by I to the Q, I, I to the bracket Q times this ideal, we're gonna land in this ideal. And so there's our R in here, there's our X in here. Okay. So where does that land? Well, by the choices we've made, um, this is in, uh, this is gonna end up in J to the D Q Q prime. Okay, that's where that ends up. And so this is in J, J is D generated. So that gets us in the Q Q prime bracket power and the coefficient d minus one q q prime. Okay. Uh, oops. Oh, and I don't I don't really care about the coefficients, so let me erase that. I always, I do this each time I've practiced as well. Uh, so that's all I need, right? And so therefore, we've got that r x is in. Oh, well, let me write this as j j to the q to the q prime bracket power. So Rx is in j to the q tight closure, which is j to the q. Okay. And that's what we wanted, right? All right. Um, so we've done, um, we've done the A1 case, all right? And so now, uh, following the notes, the way I wrote it, let's assume uh, the result for n minus one, bigger than zero, I guess the way I'm writing that. Um, okay, and again, uh, so uh, what do we get? We've we still got our x and our r; those aren't changing. Uh, so uh, we've got uh, c r x to the q prime. Okay, now this is in um, where is it? Uh, okay, so we're still in j d q q prime. Okay, which is contained in J to the Q, Q prime because J is degenerated along with the, uh, the remaining terms. So that would be J to the D minus one Q, Q prime. Okay, all right. So that's in J to the Q, Q prime. Certainly that's contained in I to the D minus one. Q, Q prime. And that is contained in J to the Q, Q prime. Well, I guess we can take the integral closure and that gets bigger, I to the D minus one, Q, Q prime bar. Okay, but now by induction, Uh, 
And where does this land? This is in J times A N minus one to the Q Q prime. Okay, so we are applying the induction hypothesis um, we're applying the abduction hypothesis on a bigger power q q prime um, and that's what we needed and so therefore again if we write that as uh, j to the bracket q uh, do I have everything right I'm sorry there's no J here. It's the, the integral closure in the a n minus one. So now we are in uh, J to the Q a n minus one to the bracket Q to the Q prime. Okay. And so therefore we have that, um, Rx is in J A N minus one star equals J A N minus one. And so X is in J A N minus one colon I, which is A N. Okay. And that shows the W equals minus one case, that's the end of the proof. All right. So the um, so if we if we want uh, to try to understand M primary ideals a little further, we have to introduce these coefficient ideals and we we get nice coefficients. Um, so I should point out here that um, that we we use that i is m primary um, pretty strongly. Um, so if if i isn't m primary, then the we have we still have this sequence. Right. It it certainly need it's not at all clear that it stabilizes. Okay, so uh I should say that uh again, this is another area that I had uh my former student Aline Hasri look at, and um we have a a paper where we, we do generalize this result. Uh in the complete case, one can use Chevrolet's. Uh, lemma uh, and and get some results, but uh, for for non M primary ideals, but but there it's a little mysterious otherwise. So we're, okay. sorry, in our M primary ideals, the only ideals for which these coefficients are known to stabilize, like finite fan of homology, maybe. Yeah, it's that's a good question. I I don't know of any other condition that really guarantees it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I wanted to say about that. And then I wanted to use the last 10 to 15 minutes to, to mention a couple of other places where um, Briance and Skoda theorems are, are relevant. Um, so let me talk about cancellation results. Uh, so, uh, okay, so, so in, in the most basic form, the Brianson Skoda theorem says, for instance, that I, 
i to the l of i bar is contained in j. Um, but in fact, uh, often um, a smaller power uh, is already oops, in J. So, so especially if you're if you're thinking about ideals that are particularly nice, they have small reduction numbers with respect to J. And so there's there's no reason you necessarily have to go up to the analytic spread uh, value to get inside J. Um, so uh, so that's a, a question. Right? So that leads to the following question. Uh, Right. What conditions uh, lead to getting, say, an n less than L of i such that i to the n bar is contained in J? Right. Night up here. Of course, that's a reduction of i. So uh, there's a nice paper of, of Craig Hunicke in from 2000. So uh, oh, he has a paper, 2000, on cancellation of ideals. Okay, so e.g., um, right, if say a times b is equal to a times c, um, that implies b equals c, right? So that's usually very false, right, for ideals. Uh, for my matrix, for my linear algebra students, it's always true for matrices, no matter what. Uh, I've learned, but um, but it's generally not true for ideals. But he he came up with some nice criteria for 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 when this really does work. Okay, um, so so no, uh, if um, if let me say it this way, if the reduction number of j on i is r then um, we have that i to the r plus one is equal to j times um, i to the r, okay? And of course, this is i times i to the r. So there's kind of, you can try to kind of think, well, is there any form of cancellation here, right? Can you cancel one of the I's and does this imply anything like I to the R is contained in J? And of course the answer is no, usually, right? You need, you need a lot more going on here. Okay. Um, but let me just write down what the theorem is that uh, we were able to show, so I guess, whoop. let's see what that theorem is. Um, so let's let Rm, uh, K, be an F rational Gorenstein. Okay, and so therefore, in fact, it's it's an F regular ring. Um, of dimension D, okay. Um, say we have an ideal in R um, with 
h being the height of i, and that we assume is strictly less than l of i. Okay, uh, so call that l. Um, and suppose that r mod i is Cohen Macaulay. So you have a, a pretty strong condition on the quotient. Uh, then for any reduction j of i, we get that i to the l minus one bar is contained in j. So we can do one better than the Briands and Skoda theorem in general will tell us. Okay. Um, and uh, my student Aline Hasri generalized this slightly. Uh, I didn't. I don't remember the actual result of, off the top of my head, um, but uh, I think we. I think it was about maybe R mod I doesn't quite have to be Cohen Macaulay. Uh, so so this is an interesting uh, result. Um, something I've spent a lot of time thinking about, but I don't recall ever getting anything useful is what about coefficients here, right? So, um, you know, could we put something here under the right conditions to get the coefficients? Uh, and uh, that would be a great new result if anybody could do that. Um, so you notice here, so right, the, the, the analytic spread needs to be strictly larger than the height, but even if the analytic spread is much larger than the height, uh, this result still only allows you to go down by one. And so again, it would be really nice to know uh, if maybe with stronger conditions, all right, so so I'll I'll write it as a question. Right, maybe maybe can one do better? So questions. So one, can we get coefficients on the right hand side? Okay, and two. Uh, so if say L is greater than H plus one, so not just greater than H, can we get uh, I to the L minus two bar contained in J? So I think those are both, both interesting questions that it would be nice to see answers to. And then, then one can wonder about if if one can answer the second question positively, can you get coefficients? Right? There's no end. There's no end to to these questions. And let me use the last few minutes. Uh, oh, I guess I have another blank page um, to talk about uniform Briance and Skoda results. So. Uh, So uniform Briansen Skoda results. Well, this is this is coming from uh, one of my favorite papers of all time. So in 1992, Craig uh, Hunicke published this paper on the uniform Art and Reese theorem. Okay, and uh, what that says well, all right, so if R is a nice, I'll just put it in quotes, a nice Noetherian ring, and again, the, the conditions are, are in the write-up, uh, if you want to see them specifically, um, then, given uh, 
n a submodule of m. These are finitely generated R modules. Then we have, of course, if, if I give you an ideal, there's an Art and Reese, the Art and Reese theorem tells you something. But what uh, Hunicke saw is that there is actually a uniform Art and Reese. So it goes this way. Then there exists some number k, which depends only on n and m, such that for all uh, n bigger than or equal to k, and for all ideals in the ring, if we look at i to the n m intersect n, then we are contained in i to the n minus k n. Okay. Now the Art and Reese theorem gives an equality with more information on the right hand side, and that is there is no uniformity there. That can't be done. But um, and I, I see Arena's face showing up. Hi, Arena. Um, she has done lots of work uh, involving Art and Reese uh, that I encourage everybody to read as well. Um, so. Uh, this is a beautiful theorem. It stems from lots of lots of the ideas that came up in uh, tight closure uh, go into that, and uh, and it's it's certainly a paper I encourage anybody to to read uh, if you haven't already. One of the results that he proved is the following. He proved um, a uniform Briance and Skoda theorem, okay, which says, um, so if R is our nice ring, same, it's exactly the same conditions um, as, and he proved in the domain case, you can generalize it a little bit, but, but really it's the domain case that's where all the information is. Um, then there exists K um, such that, again, for all ideals I contained in R and all N bigger than or equal to K, if we look at I to the N bar, then this sits inside I to the n minus k. So this is a form of Briant's and Skoda theorem, right? That you just there's there's a, but notice what this says. This says this is true for all i, no matter what the analytic spread is. Right? The the integral closure sits in a pretty big power of the ideal itself, right? That you only have to go down some uniform k. And this, this, um, the of course, this k can be quite large. And it's not connected to the dimension of the ring at all. It can be much bigger than the dimension. Uh, but are there? Um, sorry again. Um, are there any sort of effective ways to compute this number that you need for the uniform Branson scoping here? Um, I think a proof analysis would probably tell you what you needed to do, you you have to, um, you know, for instance, in the at least in the characteristic P case, you have to know something about um, the test ideal. Uh, and so, so I don't know, if you can compute the test ideal, then you're, you've gotten part way. If, um, and, and I, but I'm, uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't answer that terribly off the top of my head. All right, so that's that's actually what I wanted to finish with. I hope for everybody that this, that I've helped you to understand what the Briance and Skoda theorem is and what uh, some of the ideas are behind uh, getting these improvements on it. And I, I appreciate your attention.
are there any questions or comments uh, i have a quick question on um which sure. you wrote on uh page 10 for the theorem um yes i guess without like any strengthenings um there are cases where l minus one is sharp is that correct that is probably correct uh yeah if 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 h i mean i i think if if l is h plus one you probably can't do better uh i mean you can probably come up you, you know you can create examples where you can't do better i should say thank you uh, i have a question Ian. yes in the the Branscon's coda theorem for with coefficient ideal. Uh, do we ever get equality? Oh, uh, I, I, um, so, so how often do we get an equality, for instance, in, um, in the, in the, um, like in the regular case? Right. So, so for instance, you. Yeah, here. I kind of something like that. Yeah, because it will, if it was an equality, it will uh, help us to calculate the integral closure. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't have a really good intuition about that. Uh, it strikes me as being unlikely in general that we're getting an equality here, uh, you know, unless the reduction, well, yeah, even if the reduction number is, is small, um, seems, uh, it seems unlikely to me that we'd get equalities very often. Hmm. I, I mean, basically, I would say you know, there's, there's, there are more coefficients that probably are very hard to quantify in terms of a theorem, but I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to know that this is in this, you know, times, times the maximal ideal most of the time. It could probably happen if the reduction number is low. Yeah. Or I is M primary ID. But then the yeah. right hand side, right hand side will give you powers of an ideal. Right. Well, this, yeah, this would not apply. This particular form wouldn't apply for an M primary ideal. Then we'd be wanting to look at, at this version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and maybe, maybe there's more one could say. I I, I don't know much about it. So I, okay. I couldn't, I can't, that, that aspect of it, I can't tell you. And there is also a generalization of uh, Branscombe's coda by Reese and Sally, uh, where they take uh, in a D-dimensional regular local ring, uh, instead of taking I to the D bar, uh, take product of these ideals and then the integral closure of uh -huh. the product of D ideal is contained in every joint reduction. Oh. The I, D, I to the D bar is really I times, I D times. Yeah. So they looked at uh, any collection of D M primary ideals and then showed that the integral closure of the product is contained in every joint reduction of these D ideals. So something like that. Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, I wonder whether coefficient ideals are considered in, for this generalization. That I, it makes sense to me that there's probably something there. Um, mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I have never really done any work with, with that situation. So I, Again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's Thank a, you. a good, good assignment for a PhD student, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Or at, at least something for them to think about. I've... Okay, so are there any more comments or questions? Okay, so let's thank uh, Professor Aberbach for his nice lectures. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, it's been a pleasure to be